We're going to end tonight with clear evidence that we are indeed all coming together because last November's earthquake at Kaikoura narrowed the gap between the North and South Islands. New research from GNS Science shows the earthquake pushed parts of the South Island six metres closer to the north and raised Waipapa Bay up by eight metres. Scientists say the findings are staggering. Edward O'Driscoll reports. Belinda Girl lives at Waipapa Bay, about 30 kilometres north of Kaikoura. She says the big quake last November changed the landscape dramatically. It is horrible. It is ugly. It's white. It's smelly. There's all these rock pools that are just slimy green pools of the most hideous mosquitoes you've ever seen. And she says it's not just the seabed that was damaged. Just around the corner from us there's a, a big fault and the road lifted up um, in two places, eight metres or five metres and stuff like that. It's it's an incredible thing, as terrifying as it was, it's unbelievable to be watching it and living it, living through it, you know. Thomas Peter lives further north at Cape Campbell, where scientists say the earth moved six metres towards the North Island. He says the damage was instant. There wasn't sort of a, a bigger jolt than the other jolts, it was a fairly solid, solid shake, but obviously it happened pretty much pretty much straight away. And I shot out to the beach that night, sort of three, four in the morning, and yeah, she was a bit of a shock to the eyes seeing the uplift and things like that. A senior geology lecturer at the University of Otago, Dr Virginia Toy, says this land movement is big, but not the biggest she's heard of. During the Tohoku Oki earthquakes that happened off Japan to generate tsunamis in 2012, um, and there was a 50 metre displacement of the seafloor at that time and that was seen by our community as huge. But Dr Toy says the amount of this movement is rare in New Zealand and the findings did take her by surprise. It does seem quite large given the magnitude of the event to me. It's not an unreasonable ground displacement but it does seem large for the size of the earthquake. The research paper's lead author, Ian Hamling, says the land movement was so large because almost 180 kilometres of fault lines ruptured. He says that's much more than in the Christchurch quake. If you look at uh, back at Darfield in uh, 2010, which in itself was a very impressive rupture, the sheer magnitude of the ground displacement and the size of the, the length of the fault rupture is pretty staggering. GNS Science is to publish another nine papers about the 7.8 magnitude quake, which will make it one of the most recorded earthquakes in the world. For Checkpoint, Edward O'Driscoll.